Welcome all employees and students and thank you for joining us today for the first online opening of the academic year. We are live today in our beautiful light and science studio and the coming hour I'm going to talk I'm going to be talking to two professors, Joost Batenburg and Thomas Hankemeyer, about important scientific topics. And I'll be talking to Han de Winde, a director of education, about uh, our teaching activities. And finally, our assessor is going to join me for a talk with the chairpersons of the study associations who will meet with us from the screen. This year, we've had more biology and drug discovery than we could hope for in society. If we look at it that way, we can be positive that society sees the need for the people that we educate and they see the need for the, for the fundamental scientific research that turns out all of a sudden to be so useful. What I mean to say was, no one after the previous crisis thought that we needed more bankers and economists and that turns out to be different this time around. They still believe us and let's keep it that way. And I want to begin by thanking all of us for keeping the ship afloat during the storm. We have worked harder than I could ask for as Dean, and you have surpassed our best hopes. In that sense, it's been a weird year. We do not reach any of the ambitions that we formulated at the beginning of the, uh, of the year, but we couldn't be more proud of our community than we are today. I've often said this in Dutch, a seven is nu a tien, uh, a B minus is now an A plus, so thank you, all of you, well done. At the opening of the academic year in the Pieterskerk this year, the provost said education is what remains when all that's been learned has been forgotten. And in the current context, that's, of course, a clear message. The faculty of science and academia at large is not in the business of pumping kids' heads full of knowledge. If there's one thing that we've learned over the last few months, then it's how important it is to interact with all, with all of us. We are more than the sum of video lectures and multiple choice exams. We are more than soloists that only need other people to disagree with. We are more than drill surgeons and extra instructors that prepare to the test. In that sense, the provost was right to stress that. We have all missed each other. We are delighted that students are back in the lecture halls, even if only for once a week. Society is surely but surely gearing up to kick back into action, and we are eager to play our part. The Faculty of Science is in business, and this academic year is open. And now I'm going to be switching to our first guest, Joost Batenburg. Joost, you started exactly as I did on the 1st of January of this year. So what has it been for you these first couple of months? Well, good afternoon, Michiel. Um, to be honest, uh, these uh, couple of months, es especially right before the summer, they have felt locked up. Uh, and I think that is true for everybody. And we have been struggling, but at the same time, um, I have seen a lot of inspiration among uh, the colleagues, among uh, the students, and uh, I actually want to tell you this afternoon that also during these hardships a lot of exciting new developments have been going on. In particular, related to AI, which is becoming a key technological driver and also an ideological driver for many things that we are doing. I'm really happy that you're here, uh, Joost, because uh, it was really needed to uh, coordinate all the efforts on artificial intelligence, and right from the start, you have played an important role in, uh, in, in doing that. So I'm, I'm really happy that you're with us, um, and I'm really eager to look at the, um, at the presentation that you've prepared us uh, and, and, and take people of the faculty along in, in the journey that you've had so far. Thank you. So... In case that you have been wondering if this development of AI that you see all around us, that you hear about all around us, uh, if it is really a big thing or it is just a hype, well, I can tell you it is really a big thing and it is here to stay. In fact, AI, artificial intelligence, is already influencing many parts of our lives. It is a key technological driver in uh, the care 
technology, in hospitals where AI can provide solutions for providing better care, for providing more cost-efficient care, for more interaction between the doctor and the patients. It's a key driver in industry for creating better logistics, for creating greener production, and for customizing products exactly to our needs. And what I see around me here in the Faculty of Science and at Leiden University, it is also a key driver of the research that we are doing. If you look at, for instance, uh, the pharmacological research that is happen happening at this faculty, it is no longer just a matter of doing experiments in the lab, but it is also uh, about analyzing all the data that comes out of these experiments about planning the experiments not just by hand but based on algorithms in order to streamline the development process of new drugs and new insights. And actually if you look at the pipelines that are now in place for developing all these vaccines and other means of care, they are driven by massive amounts of data and artificial intelligence. But also across other institutes, if we look at astrophysics for instance, we are part of a big national science agenda program on using AI to analyze all the telescope data in smarter ways such that we can adapt dynamically and on the fly to the observations in the Cortex program. Um, also across the faculties, a new NWO pro program has recently been granted between archaeology and our LIAX Institute on analyzing tons of data from ar archaeological manuscripts in different languages in automated ways using artificial intelligence. So I cannot stress enough the profound impact that artificial intelligence already has on the different layers of society, but also on the research and education, and it is only becoming more and more. Now, of course, on an economic level, in the Netherlands and beyond, this is also a big thing. And I think that's, that's really different uh, from AI as a te technology than from other developments we have seen in the exact sciences. It is also impacting the economy at a big scale. And we are now organizing ourselves. Especially the province of South Holland is a main driver that brings everything together. We have three universities in Leiden, in Delft, in Rotterdam, organized as LDE. We have the academic hospitals and we have the whole ecosystem of companies, of public partners around it. And in particular, for instance, Claire, which is also led by um, uh, well, which is led by Professor Holger Hoes from Leiden University, is the main AI organization in Europe that unites researchers across the continent. So we are in a very good position to further AI, to uh, make new plans and to drive on this initiative to push the boundaries further. The landscape is also particularly complex. So we are here in Leiden and we have organized ourselves across the seven faculties in sales. Sales is the AI initiative of Leiden. And what is very special is that the humanities, the social sciences, the exact sciences all collaborate towards new e AI initiatives. Then at a larger scale, we are organized in LDE with Delft and Rotterdam and at a national level and an international level in the Dutch AI coalition and Claire. Now, all of this may sound a bit boring, but in fact, it is very important at the moment because AI can be seen as one of the key technologies that is going to push our economy out of the downturn that we have now and into the future. And therefore, it is crucial that we use the momentum now to deploy new initiatives. So, what I really want to say is that um, AI is a uniting set of technologies that goes further than just computer science. In fact, we need the humanities, we need law, we need the languages and collaborate all together to develop the technologies of the future. Wow, thank you.
That was a wonderful uh, 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 rundown through all the things that you have started to do and are doing at the moment. And uh, um, before we uh, go back, um, I, I want to ask a quick question. Your, your own field is, is medical imaging. Uh, uh, that's, that's your scientific area. So are there things that an intelligent algorithm can see that a doctor cannot? I think the answer is definitely yes. And um, well, the most familiar example which you read about in the news is that uh, algorithms are starting to do similar things as radiologists. So mm -hmm. they look at scans, they make interpretations of the pathologies, and they do so very well. But at the same time, there you can still ask the question, can a person uh, really be replaced by an algorithm? There I think the answer is no, we need the interaction between these two. Um, but especially in the more complex signals. So when you combine data from different sources, mm -hmm. perhaps an EEG signal, an imaging uh, device, uh, information from a database, and linking these data across all these modalities, that is where algorithms can actually do things that a doctor yeah. cannot. Yeah. So that's seeing the hidden con hidden connections across images that, 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 that exactly. that's very hard for a... Uh, okay. But the challenge then is to uh, present that information to the doctor and make, in fact, the AI system a companion in making the diagnosis. Yeah, that's a challenge to make doctors a companion. Uh, I completely agree with that. <laughs> um, thanks. Um, you've, you've shown that, that, you know, there are many things that we where we work with, with partners, uh, maybe also the Bioscience Park, also uh, other universities, other faculties within Leiden. What, what should we focus on as the Faculty of Science? Huh? What, what should we do ourselves and what should we address together with our partners? What's our scientific focus? Well, I think AI is particularly interesting as it is a very layered set of technologies. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, uh, there is uh, the core AI research, where we develop the neural network architectures, yeah. where we really develop the engines of AI. Mm -hmm. And that is a key focus within our faculty, especially within the Computer Science Institute, LIAX and the Mathematical Institute. Um, but in this same faculty, we have also very powerful users of AI. We use AI for our research in bioscience, in astrophysics, in all these other fields. And I think uh, looking inward in the faculty, these are the two key components. But then again, um, AI cannot exist without the human component. Mm -hmm. We need to interact with humans. If you think about th the care part, for instance, yeah. using the technology responsible becomes extremely important. How are you going to regulate that? How are you going to communicate with your patients and so on? And actually, we are tremendously rich at Leiden University in the sense yeah. that we have all of this on board yeah. in our other faculties. Um, of course, we cannot do this in isolation. We are part of a bigger landscape. And uh, to work on the bigger goals, we have always and will be a collaborative party in the bigger projects. Yeah, and that's what you've been working on very hard, of course. So, so making all those connections with, with you know, all the people that strengthen us as a science faculty, precisely because we're surrounded by humanities and others. That's perfect. And, and Michiel, you know what's so much fun, as especially for me, that um, I have sometimes been asked the question in the past, but Joost, are you really an AI person? Um, like, are you really working on this engine? And yeah. the answer is yes, but I think the question is wrong. Because in these days, everybody can be an AI person. Yeah. It is not restricted to us from the exact sciences, but actually we need all of these I uh, think I think that's what you've done very well, had to, to, to connect with, with everybody. Just a, just a final quick question. Uh, and, and, um, there's going to be a Marshall Plan to kick the economy back into action, uh, the, the uh, innovatie funds. Uh, uh, what do we, we're opening the academic year. What do we need to do as a, as a faculty to make sure that that money flows to, to Leiden? I think, um, well, the most important 
the important thing to do right now is to get to know each other within the university even better. Okay. What I have been seeing is that all of the components are actually in place and all of the knowledge is there. But we need to organize ourselves and know of each other where we want to go and what we are already good at. Okay. That's a wonderful challenge and I'm really happy to uh, kick that into gear again now that the summer is over. So thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, Michiel. And um, with that, we're moving over to our second guest, uh, Han de Winde, who is uh, Director of uh, Education for the Biology Program. Um, and um, welcome, Han. I'm delighted that you uh, <laughs> could talk to us. Thank um, you, Michiel. This has been a busy year, I guess. Uh, <laughs> you could say that again. Yeah. Um, let's let's briefly go back, right? So, w what can you tell us about the first consequences uh, for faculty education when we when we had to go into a lockdown? Uh, how did the teachers cope? Yeah, well, uh, first of all, we we had to recover from from the shock, uh, literally. Huh? Not not only teachers, not only us as staff, but certainly also the students. All of a sudden, we were at home. Uh, and and well, a regular education as we know it uh, came to a full stop. That that was something that we never experienced before, obviously. And very rapidly, uh, all our teachers, staff, but I definitely also would like to underscore and keep underscoring that also the students themselves were immediately busy in okay, how can we uh, cope with this, yeah. survive? Because uh, yeah, the, the education programs are, are the heart of the f of the faculty. I would say, of course, next to research, but certainly the education program uh, programs. And um, yeah, I keep telling everyone that uh, all teachers have been doing a, a, a great job, a tremendous job of uh, uh, in in a very short period of time, completely overhauling uh, not only parts of courses but full courses. Uh, in, in terms of being able to teach online. Mm -hmm. I mean, someone who is not really involved in, in university education may think, okay, you have a program, you have a course, you have a book, and whether uh, uh, you do this in class or you, you just uh, teach online, you give your lectures online, doesn't make such a b big difference. Yes, it does because you still need the interaction. Uh, you still need to be sure that students take up uh, whatever you would like to bring to bring them um, and especially the well let's call it practical parts of our education which is a, a very large and important part of all education programs in our faculty uh, regardless whether you're talking about chemistry biology or computer science and mathematics on the other end of the uh, of the faculty I mean uh, the, the the practical uh, experience and ex building expertise is of course a main part but when you're sitting at home you can't do that no you can't ask our students to you know do work with viruses exactly. or, or dangerous chemicals in oh. their <laughs> kitchen sink that's please not gonna, not. gonna gonna fly please not so so that that uh, and and also there uh, uh, various creative clever solutions have been found to at least uh, uh, well supply part of those practical trainings uh, at a distance uh, and, that and and that is something that well before this all came upon us we, we, we in in certain parts of our programs wouldn't have thought about yeah did, did everybody have to manage that by themselves or did people uh find ways to connect or yeah. was there interaction between students and, and, and faculty? Fortunately, yes, I would say yes. Uh, we, we have uh, a very good support team in our faculty, which was very small and uh, during the course of, well, this <laughs> disaster between brackets, uh, uh, also the faculty has expanded on that very rapidly. Uh, also, the university already had some support staff uh, running around literally before the uh, uh, the crisis uh, to support teachers that already were busy thinking of well uh, renewing their programs using online uh, technology to uh, to come up with uh, newer programs so there was uh, expertise available but uh, we had of course to rapidly expand on the expertise and the support and what 
immediately became apparent that you, you always, when, when you are uh, uh, implementing new technology, you always have front runners and people that simply are a bit hesitant. Yeah. And what we immediately have seen uh, spread out over the whole faculty, uh, that uh, some of those front runners were immediately available, available for everyone. And not only within a program, but I've seen several examples of people, for example, from uh, mathematics uh, uh, being a front runner in the mathematics program, immediately being available for colleagues in, in biology and chemistry and vice versa, uh, building on their expertise to help other teachers, other staff uh, with the implementation of all these novel technologies. Okay. And that, that was wonderful to see. And also students, again, uh, underscoring, I mean, we have <laughs> very clever many very clever students in our faculty and in several programs also students have been uh, uh, quite busy to uh, to help implementing these novel technologies yeah yeah i've yeah. seen well it was a sight to see when the students could come back to the lab even if only for for <laughs> limited experimental work so happy to finally be back and 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 do exactly what they came here for huh? yeah i think i i think i think that's what what we are looking at i mean this, this uh, although it's uh, only literally one year ago i took this at the start of the uh, this this photograph at the start of the uh, uh, study year last year a year ago uh, just as an example uh, mm -hmm. the the completely stuffed practical room of the first year biology course with 180 students. I mean, already one it's one year ago and it already, already looks nostalgic, uh, like nostalgia. Huh? And and we now, I think we also have a picture of that. I mean, we now have to reckon with this type of, of situations where we have these pla practical rooms, but of course we, keep, we need to keep distance and we have to revert the practical programs uh, where uh, uh, small groups of students, the one after the other, can still do their experiments. Uh, which immediately means that, well, uh, there's only 24 hours in a day, so we can in total yeah. have less practical uh, experience in, in the programs. Uh, we try to, uh, well, to still have the maximum possible. And it's cramming and more it's stuff into cramming an hour. Huh? Exactly. Yeah. And, 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 of course, uh, yeah, it, it also requires more staff hours. Uh, and, and that's also quite uh, important to, to, to see that we also have to invest, and it has been done, uh, investing as a faculty and as, as institutes. We need extra hands to be able to, to cope with this. And, s and uh, underscoring the, uh, what the students do here, I mean, uh, I hardly have heard any complaints from students about no. uh, turning over, overhauling these programs. Of and they, they understand that this comes with uh, ups and downs and we have to learn all together. And, and students are, are well, uh, well, very, very patient in this as well. And that's very important. Well, that's a, that's a very positive thought and yeah. it brings up another question. Eh? So, um, and uh, is there a silver lining in all of this? Eh? Is there is there somewhere a, a positive thing that we that we may take out of this? Nobody says that it's great that we're now all online, but but nope. but but what what do you see as as maybe a positive after effect uh, uh, when all of this is said and done? Well, the, the the interesting thing is, I mean, just looking at at, at the education, so not on on on, on the problems and the surround, but on the education, uh, many of the ideas of uh, uh, innovation in education, online uh, possibilities, um, uh, teaching at a distance, flexible teaching, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, we were already working on those ideas but of course slowly but surely as we say it because everybody also had to uh, well had to attend the regular programs and mm -hmm. takes time and you have the dif difference between the front runners and and the people that are following patiently and well this crisis meant that we all of a sudden had to speed up things tremendously and uh, a lot lot of very uh, uh, yeah i would say i would say beautiful uh, new ideas have come up, have come up, and we have been able in various programs to show what the benefits are of this new type of, of teaching. Okay. And I'm not saying that everything is already okay, and uh, I mean we still are learning, and uh, things can be better in in many ways. But I th I think that this this flexibility in teaching that we now see appearing uh, is something that that uh, should, as far as I'm concerned, but also will remain. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps in, uh, in, in also uh, on the long run, not today, I recognize that, but on the longer run to uh, diminish also the workload in, uh, in building new education programs and things okay. like that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good thought. Um, 
So on 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 a personal level, what 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 do you miss most in 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 these uh, uh, times when when we don't do a lot of teaching on campus? Yeah, uh, well, uh, literally uh, the the direct direct. <laughs> physical uh, contact well eh, o in in place on campus you know what i mean direct contact with uh, with students and and colleagues i mean uh, yes we can do a lot online at a distance but uh, we human beings are also social yeah social animals literally and uh, we uh, i myself but i also hear this from colleagues and from students that we are certainly missing out on this just doing things together and li and literally i mean and and this in, in if you have a, a small work group of students working on a project together uh it's 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 much more fun to just sit in a room around yeah. maybe a large but still a large table um uh, than just sitting at home behind your screen and and things i mean yeah, literally that that's that's what i I feel I miss. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the small interactions that we miss out on. Uh, it's not the 45 yeah. minutes standing in front of the lecture. Definitely hall, but not. It's, it's the five minutes before and after. Yeah, uh, definitely. And that, that those were the five minutes that you sometimes thought before, uh, <laughs> man, I, I wish they wouldn't ask so many questions because I have to move on. Fully true, <laughs> fully true. So that's, that's interesting that, yeah. you, that you pick up and you start to, to realize again how important that is sure and and that's where a lot of the of the interactions uh, is ac is across um can you tell something uh, uh about the upcoming year uh, um um uh what the practicals will look like yeah uh, well I, i i try to briefly already indicate that uh, yes the practical should be there but can't be there in the way we did that before. So uh, just as an example, huh, I'm, I'm uh, in, in our biology program, but I know in, in the chemistry program, for example, it's, it's a comparable situation uh, with numbers of students, et cetera, et cetera. So what we did is to uh, just make smaller groups of, of students, so not uh, the 220 students in one uh, practical room, but uh, four groups of 55 students, which fit under the current conditions, of course, on a distance and then uh, well repeat the practical program four times yep. so uh, some sort of a, a revolving mm -hmm. program but okay this sounds simple <laughs> but in between interspersed with that you have uh, 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 work group meetings uh, we have uh, the uh, ba uh, basic um, uh, mathematics and basic statistics yeah, yeah. courses also interwoven in between which means that the full schedule for each group is repeated and revolving around each other so be the, the schedule becomes quite complex It that does. that per i mean the students will not immediately have a problem with that because they have their own schedule in each group but we need extra hands we need extra people we need extra place and we need longer working days to to get this done but okay. so so that is okay. what it looks like now and we started this week and thus far <laughs> it it works i'm going to i'm i'm going to cut you off because we have a couple of questions that came in uh, through the uh, chat boxes so mm -hmm. uh, the first question is uh, what help is there for lecturers to create online courses? Uh yeah. uh, that, that, that's a very good question. Uh, coming back to, uh, we briefly discussed on the support in the, in the faculty. Uh, so we have uh, a, a teaching su support center Uh, literally in the, in in the middle of the in the center of the faculty, uh, where we have uh, people that are uh, constantly available uh, for uh, questions, uh, answers, but not only for that, also for hands-on support uh, for uh, teachers that uh, that really need help to change plans, change programs, yeah. implement technology. Uh, yeah, uh, immediately they're available. And they're, they're available through the directors of education, I guess, but yes. also through the SEEDS email address. Through the SEEDS, uh, the SEEDS email, yeah. uh, um, but uh, I know also by experience that some people sometimes don't know, but they certainly find their own education director uh, in, uh, in the program. And it's and great that they're here in, in the building, huh? so that's the important. Building. There's another question. Uh, somebody, uh, it's a bit of a philosophical question maybe, but, but how do you envision hybrid education? Does it work? Or should you just do everything online? But, uh, do you have any experience or is it... Uh, what yeah, my, my, my just my personal vision is that uh, we need hybrid education because of the interaction. Uh, you uh, uh, rightfully said that the, uh, uh, well, 45-minute uh, lecturing, I mean, uh, maybe we should change thoughts about that and, and we don't need that. We see that. So currently, the new, the new, let's call it new program that we're building now, indeed, 
consists of uh, introductory lectures, lectures uh, uh, of 20, 25 minutes max, which are online. Then students will study yeah, yeah. with the material. And then what we do is we schedule uh, uh, question and answer sessions. And we schedule on, s on campus, we schedule the uh, practical. So there's a place for online parts, but, it yeah. but we need people on We need here. people on site. We need boots on the ground. Definitely. That's a good thought. Thank you so much for, for sharing your thoughts on, uh, on, okay. on, on teaching uh, uh, with us. And, um, and then we, we now move on to um, our uh, third guest uh, of this opening of the academic year session. And that's um, uh, Thomas Hankemeyer, who is a professor of analytical biosciences. And um, I'm going to be talking uh, with Thomas um, about, um, well, about COVID-19, because uh, um, you do great stuff, a little bit in the field of analytical chemistry, on, on the brink of biology, and you want to understand uh, uh, what you, or you want to see what you can measure. And of course, now all of a sudden, you had this great new project uh, uh, that you could work on. Yeah. Yes, that is true. No, of course, we were all shocked by the pandemic, how fast it happened that from one day to the other we were sent home. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> by you. <laughs> and then had to see that not only we suffered, but the whole world started to suffer and that we had a big crisis. Mm -hmm. And that no one knew at that moment how to treat, how to react. And that this was the moment where, where we and a lot of colleagues people, PhD students, postdocs started to discuss what can we do. No. Well, that, that was really impressive. And you, you were one of the first to kick into action and say, OK, let's let's do something. Right. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm really eager to 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 learn uh, what you can share with the uh, with the people in the faculty yeah. about some of the things that you have done uh, over, over the last couple of months. So Good. Look at your uh, presentation. <laughs> Thank you. And there I have to say, it's, it's not me who did it. Uh, it's a big team of people to make all this happen. And I'm very glad that I have a brilliant group of people around me, but also had your support when I called you, can we go back to the lab one week after we were shut out? <laughs> 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 no, that for this, we were allowed to do mm, the very carefully some experiments. Anyway, I'm very happy to share what we have done so far and trying to understand much better the, the COVID-19 disease, but also to thinking about how we can maybe change diagnostics. So, well, these were the pictures we all saw, no, and we were, let's say, suddenly realizing we have a problem. We have a very serious problem, and we don't know what we can do. No. And rather early, no, we saw, for example, this paper from, from Nijmegen, that Bradykainen plays a very important role. No, we heard that people suffered from the lung problems, the degradation of the vasculature, kidney problems. And then we rather soon realized this is very similar to what we do in our research, studying vascular problem, the loss of vascular integrity and sepsis. And that's what we, for example, doing together with the LUMC, Antonia from Sonnenfeld and our spin-off company, Mimeta. So we thought if we now take the, our blood vessels on a chip, and try to understand which molecules play an important role. Maybe we are can understand a little bit more the mechanism, especially at the end of the disease when, let's say, the virus has entered the body and, let's say, there are a lot of complications happening. So that's what we started to address. And uh, actually, we just started to go to the lab. However, you can only measure if you have blood. So we called all the people around from the LUMC, Erasmus MC, other hospitals, Breda, no, in the Amphia Hospital where it started, no, in the Netherlands, and we got samples. And actually what you can see here, no, we used metabolomics, different platforms, we got different plat uh, blood samples from patients. And what you see, for example, on the left is actually a lot of things happen during the time course. Day zero is here, the, the day of hospitalization. And you see many differences between patients, which is also what you see in the hospital. And what you also see that people are different. And for example, on the right, you see uh, in green, those people n n who entered the hospital, but they didn't well luckily resolved the disease and didn't enter the ICU. In the middle, you see those who entered the ICU, and the red ones are those who unfortunately didn't manage no, and, and at the end died. And you see very differences in the metabolic profiles, and these are very low numbers, so we are measuring and measuring a lot now, and we are getting more and more an idea what is happening. And especially what we are now looking at is the transition from 
uh, from the more, let's say, normal state, and especially uh, in the disease, we have a second phase where, let's say, the severity of the disease for some patients gets more and more critical. And that's the, sta the moment of hyperinflammation and hypercoagulation. The, you see the cytokine storm, and that's what we are focusing on. If we would understand much better what happens, then we could use drugs to intervene. So that's what we did, and we have some very interesting results there. But then, of course, the other challenge, of course, is if we know what happens, what are the drugs which we could use? And now I'm talking not about the vaccine, I'm more talking about how can we prevent these complications. N and there, at the same time, Varand Mons and his team has started to make all the COVID data worldwide fair n and, and build this Vodan network. N so together with Barrent and also Aritos and some others, n we started to build a disease progression model using the Aritos platform at Knowledge Graphs. And there, what you see there on the slide is n on the top, n from the left to the right, how a lung gets worse and worse during the disease and below the different symptoms, but also genes and proteins and pathways reported to be connected to these symptoms and actually then you can start not only to build on the COVID data but you can also call build on all possible uh, available knowledge uh, from more than 250 databases worldwide and then we can put our metabolomics results into context and then rationalize our ideas uh, rationalize hypothesis and also can explore different drugs so what actually at the end we we can do is we can look what happens we can put it into context and then start to learn from this kind of relations of molecules, of drugs, uh, what is maybe a good way uh, how to treat. And it's something we anyway were working on, but all this COVID-19, let's say, drama and pandemic uh, accelerated this progress so much that where we talked maybe months how we should do it, we had to realize it, it within a month or two to get it up and running. Now it's really something which is really impressive and I invite you also to look. So what are the lessons learned so far? What did we achieve? On one hand, no, 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 I can happily say yes, metabolomics can actually add a lot and mass spec. No, so that's why we love metabolomics and mass spectrometry uh, for drug research and disease research, because it helps to understand the disease. Uh, you can find uh, disease severity markers and maybe most important, it can help uh, to find better targets for treatments, uh, especially for those patients who really suffer. Uh, I've been in the Erasmus uh, actually last week again at the intensive care and then if you read the medical records and how desperate sometimes the clinicians are to save people but they just don't know what to do. Well, we need also this type of information uh, to guide and to help. But also, no, 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 and I couldn't have much time now to show that, but the combination actually of our blood vessels on chip or organ on chip, metabolomics, real world data, dynamic data, we have patients with 20 time points, for example, and then using this data integration or artificial intelligence, which Joost had just talked about, there's really a great way, not only for COVID-19, but also for personal medicine in general. And also maybe lastly to, to mention that we are also working very hard with, let's say, the learnings which we had no, on can we not maybe, and also by learning that PCR seems to be very slow and expensive and there are a lot of testing problems, can we not maybe use mass spec and our findings and, and other knowledge to diagnose COVID-19 or identify those who are COVID-19 carriers are infected to identify them much earlier. And there we are also doing very exciting research, which we are now validating and we hope that we can solve or contribute to addressing the testing problem. So in summary, uh, what I have to say is that on one hand, yes, we had very nice results. Maybe even more important, uh, it was great to see that you see a shift in the way of research, how we do it. Uh, you, it's much more collaborative, fast, we can achieve now in months what usually projects take years uh, to achieve that. And of course, again, uh, if you are not have enthusiastic people around, the colleagues, the PhD students, postdoc of our group. It really has been fantastic how hard everyone was working and enthusiastic and they're still working on this. So I have to say that the this is the spirit the of good science and I'm very happy that here in Leiden we have the perfect environment and also the science park the to do something with what we do. 
Wow, that's really impressive. I mean, uh, the last slide says, what can metabolomics do? And then immediately you zoom out into six directions. I don't think you ever do small projects, do you? Uh, well, <laughs> all problems <laughs> have, uh, you do in small steps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but this is big and current, right? So I try to do impact. Yeah, and, and, so, uh, um, and uh, so there's a lot of Im immediate action needed. And, and, and does it change the way that, that, that things work? Uh, um, I, I guess you didn't, right? You, you, you just get going or you immediately team up. How, uh, how does it work? How does the kick of a, of a project well, <laughs> it's different. You don't drink a beer anymore. No? You <laughs> just call and Zoom <laughs> <laughs> or use Teams. So that yeah. was one of the things which is also to some extent what I learned. Collaborations worldwide. No? We are part of an NIH initiative where we are the European, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, hub no, to, to link to the in initiatives which Forshi and others are developing there. No? No, you just call by Skype and you just connect, you exchange ideas. So I think the whole is getting even more dynamic. No? which I think is just good, no, because we still have a lot of problems to solve. Whether it's COVID-19, we also didn't have and solved and everything. And so having a good diseases. network allows you to kickstart also. Quickly. A good network, but also the right infrastructure. Well, yeah. well okay. without a good lab here, no, 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 we couldn't do anything. No, that's I'm very happy that we have that possibilities. But also all the data infrastructure, that yeah. these knowledge graphs, data integration, that what we do, we can integrate with others and we don't have to repeat what others already did and we can immediately build upon. I think yep. that's really great. And that's also, well, as you know, that's something which we really want to build up together with Baron Mons and others here yeah in yeah. Leiden to build, let's say, the real leisure platform yeah. uh, from digital twins to experimental twins yeah. and real world data. No? Yeah, so that's uh, so that also connects, of course, to our, to our first guests. And yes. Uh, um so and, and, and a lot of your work is related to uh, testing and, and, and analyzing uh, uh, samples. And so, so now it takes, well, three days to get an appointment. I don't think that's <laughs> within your venue to do something about, but, yeah. the, but the test takes over three hours, the PCR test. So, so, so what's your dream? Uh, how how uh, far can you, can you, do you want it in seconds or minutes or does it, well are you going for cheap? Well, for all of them, of course, <laughs> <laughs> no, because our <laughs> hobby is technology no, and, and actually we are working in the domain of high throughput yeah. metabolomics a lot because our vision is or my dream is that every Dutch person and worldwide can have their metabolic profile at whatever moment they want and need. Of course, now we have a different situation. Y it's it should be actually more or less immediate. No? If you yeah. enter Schiphol, if you're entering an event, no? if you want to go to a soccer event, no, it would be nice if you could be measured and immediately have your response within a minute or a few minutes or the latest within half an hour. Yeah. And that's now things we are working on. And the good thing is you we well have some analytical background. Yeah, no? yeah. Mass spec is reagent free. No? So yeah. we don't need all the reagents. No? Yeah. And that's very good. Which is limiting the PCR tests, of course. For example. That we're, and that we're doing now. Yeah. And it makes it more broad. Yeah. Um, so again, uh, we also have audience questions, which, which is good because we and please keep yep. them coming. The question. So, uh, uh, um, uh, well, um, one question is, you know, should we be dreaming about vaccines because that's the the the, the way to go, or or is it better to focus on preventing long-term damage, uh, for instance, to the lungs yep. via drugs? What, where do you think this is going? Well. I think the answer is very simple. We, we have a lot of people in the world to work on science and to develop things, so we should focus on both. The right. vaccine, of course, would solve the problem at the yeah. end, but before we have a vaccine, no, I think we should address the complications too. So I think we have to do both. And, and testing, no, and rapid and testing. And the question which is more likely doesn't really matter because no. science is uncertain anyway, so let's let's try all. And hope for the best that the problem is solved as soon as possible. Well, if we put people to work, it, it's going to fly. Uh, um, another question is, is, is it reasonable to assume that uh, uh, COVID-19 is a rapidly mutating virus and therefore it's going to be hard to combat? I can you see that in met metabolomics or? Well, to some extent, actually, that's the beauty of metabolomics. We just see what happens and we huh. don't look for the genes. No. Mm -hmm. So if there are mutations, but yeah. let's say the symptoms and the complications are just the same, no, no, we, we won't even notice. No, no. Yeah. And that's also, for example, if you do a rapid test and you don't have an antibody or so, no, yeah. and, and we measure the things which we measure, the impact more, then, then 
even we are not affected. But I'm not the expert on the mutations. I just no read no. in the literature. No, it's metabolomics, not no. genomics that you focus on. Eh? So um, then, the, then another question from the audience. Uh, Roy van der Berg uh, asks, do you use AI in your research? Uh, a well, short answer. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. No, no, I think <laughs> more important is no, first we have to make our data AI ready no, so that we can integrate them. And how we integrate them? Well, like we could uh, discuss a lot. No, we have very concrete ideas how we should do patients' data in the cloud that everyone has their own data no, under control and then algorithms can visit that and that are uh, AI algorithms or just statistics. But the, answer, but the, the answer, answer is, yes. is yes, as for almost everybody. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for all the hard work and uh, um, uh, well, the, the, the wonderful things that you have done so far and I, I wish you all, all the success that you can have in, in taking this further. Thanks Good. a lot. Thank you. And then now we move on to uh, our final guests, uh, but maybe the most important ones, our students. And, and um, I want to begin by welcoming Joost Barents. Uh, who is our new assessor in the in the faculty board? I, I hope some of you have seen his introductory uh, movie on uh, online already. But um, here you are in Thank the you flesh. Thank, Thank you so you. much for uh, joining us. Um, uh, you've been with us on the faculty board for well just a couple of days now yes, so far. Indeed. So so what has it been for you as a well let's say normal student uh, um, uh, over the last semester before the summer? Yeah, I uh, study astronomy and I did my bachelor research project uh, last semester and this project could be tot totally done online. So for me it was easy to make the transition from working at the computer at, at the faculty or behind my laptop at home. But uh, yeah, after a while I really started to miss my fellow students. So in April and in May I yeah, really started to miss those moments that you and Hande I talked about before those short moments before and after the lectures. Yeah, I can really uh, sympathize with that. And um, well, uh, since you're here, we're not going to be talking to only you. So uh, I see now five faces in front of me, uh, uh, um, uh, and those are the um, uh, the presidents, I guess, right, uh, of the uh, uh, studievereniging, the, the, the study associations. And I'm really happy because the, their names read Celine, uh, Emma, Lise, Bas, and Elodie. And that, so that means, uh, um, well, the females are dominant, uh, I must say. So, uh, well done. Um, what was it like for you? Uh, who can I give the floor? Emma, what was it like for you to, uh, uh, to get through the, uh, the last couple of months? Um, hi, thank you. Uh, it was actually not that bad. It was, uh, I have to get used to everything, but eventually everything was organized really well and the online lectures and I had to do my bachelor research. So it was all really uh, well organized. So after a while, everything was pretty good actually. Okay. And uh, uh, boss, um, what 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 was the most radical change for you? Uh. Uh, hi, uh, yeah, it, it, that's a good question. Um, I think also for me was the the, the interaction that you really miss. Uh, you know, I can I can do with with online lectures, and you know that that's all fine. But um, I'm a student of mathematics, and I always say that mathematics is a team sport. Um, and it it you really start to notice that when you can't talk to your teammates um, when you're working on something or you've just got this sort of idea in your head and you really need to bounce it off of someone. Um, you know, you really want to just talk to people, but now you have to like call them or uh, send them a message or whatever, whereas usually you can just talk to them and you see them. So you can just say, hey, I've got this thing in my head. Um, you know, let's talk about it. Well, yeah, I I, I see where you're coming from, but of course, it, uh, you, the study associations, are very important in, in facilitating those those interactions and, and making sure that that you know students feel uh, uh, welcome and and at home. So, uh, uh, Lisa, what 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 is the studies association doing to to still make that happen? Uh, 
Can you hear me? Um, I can hear you now. Let's try again. Organize stuff online. We're also trying to organize some stuff uh, physically. So just ensure everyone keeps distance from each other and rules. Uh, important now since students don't meet each other in the the lectures that we organize moments where they can meet each other. Okay, and uh, Elodie, how uh, how is your uh, study association dealing with it? Um, well, kind of the same as Lisa. We're uh, organizing some stuff online um, and carefully also organizing some physical activities uh, and making sure everybody keeps their distance and we're just uh, brainstorming about possibilities mostly. And um, uh, Celine, what, what, um, uh, what, what events do you have lined up for the, for the next year? What, what, what are you going to try and do? Yes, um, well, so we usually we usually have uh, weekly drinks uh, at the faculty. Uh, we're trying to uh, uh, change that into once a month at like cafes because they're slowly starting to open up again. Um, then we have some master and career events coming up. Uh, those will mostly be online, but we're staying hopeful for the second semester. Um, Furthermore, I think uh, there will be no parties, but uh, there are still some online uh, uh, coffee breaks and study moments and just uh, ways to connect with your fellow students. And um, uh, maybe if I, I can ask you uh, another question, uh, what was it like to, to welcome the freshman students uh, to, uh, to, to, to the campus? Well, I personally wasn't uh, present at, uh, we had an introduction at the Hochlandse Kerk for all our first year students. I will be seeing them for the first time uh, in a minute. We're actually uh, uh, giving them lab coats and other uh, materials you will need for all the practicals. Um, so I'm very excited about that and I, I'm very excited to see all their faces because you know a room, but you don't really know, you know uh, what the person actually looked like. They could be very tall, for instance, because you only see them sitting behind uh, <laughs> their laptop. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm excited. So, Lisa, let's give you another shot at uh, talking with us. What, what, what was it like for you to welcome uh, uh, the freshman students back? Yeah, it was uh, really nice. Uh, we saw them at the El Cid uh, physical day which was really nice. Um, of course, when, you, when they send you emails and stuff, you can see their names, but then you can put names to the faces, so that's really nice. Um, and also our introduction day was uh, really fun. I think the students had a lot of fun meeting each other as well. So yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I, I quickly went to the Hoogelandse Kerk and I thought, well, this is really nice actually. Maybe we can do it again next year. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful atmosphere, so that's uh, uh, well something that I liked. Um, so then, um, thanks, thanks a lot for for joining us uh, for a uh, uh, discussion, and um, uh, I I really want to uh, compliment you for uh, the upbeat atmosphere that you've had because you made all these plans for welcoming students and you had all these great ideas, and then. Uh, especially the, the last days before uh, the El Cid, there was, you know, we're going to cancel, we're not going to cancel, we're going to cancel. But you kept, you kept your spirits up and, and uh, you just pushed on. And I think you did wonderful for our freshman students. So I really want to make a, a huge compliment to, to, for the hard work that you've done, and, but especially for keeping the spirit up. I, I really, I, I couldn't have enjoyed that more. Thank you so much. Um, and then uh, back to you, uh, Joost. Um, um, you now have a year of, s of uh, being an uh, assessor in front of you. And, yes. and what do you hope to do for, for students uh, in the next year? Yeah, interesting question, Michiel. I want to make sure that the voice of the student is heard this year because uh, many uh, decisions will be made at the faculty level. Many new things will be tried out. So it's very important that we know the opinion of the students about these matters. So I also want to encourage all the students to uh, raise their voice to make sure they will be heard 
So they need to talk to the education committees, faculty councils, also to the city associations and to me. So uh, yeah, I hope uh, that I can make sure that uh, yeah, their voice will be uh, heard. And and uh, well, I'm sure you've been listening already. So what what, what are what are things that that students worry about, and and uh, what are the things that you are now pushing to to bring to the attention of the administration? Yeah, I think students uh, worry about uh, that the fiscal activities uh, will be cancelled again. So uh, yeah, it's really important that they keep distance, that they follow the measures. Because the uh, yeah physical education is really important for uh, social well-being, because uh, yeah social interaction is important for the students. I experienced it myself, but I miss my fellow students. So yeah, I think it's really important that uh, they follow the measures, and then we uh, yeah we can have a lot of physical uh, contact this year. Yeah, so and, and we're we're happy to have them back on campus for, yes, for as much as we can. Uh, um, and um, uh, what do you think um, uh, uh, is important uh, um, to that we can do other than than bringing them back on campus? What 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 are what are thoughts on? Uh yeah, for example, the the study associations are really important for the uh, community building. Uh, yeah, their activities uh, will play uh, an important role for the uh, well-being of the students this year. Okay, well then we'll make sure that we uh, that we keep that uh, um, on the radar screen. Yes, and, uh, indeed. Uh, I think we've been imp impressed with the students so far, so I'm really happy that uh, um, that it's been uh, 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 so so successful so far. Yeah. So I look forward to a great year. Uh, yeah, me too. Me too. And I, I hope you will uh, enjoy it as much as I will. Okay. Thanks. Um, and dan komen we alweer, um, ja, toch helaas aan het uh, eind. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh my goodness, uh, in English. Um, and so now we, uh, uh, sadly enough, come to the end uh, of the opening of the academic year, but not of the year itself. So ha we have an entire year to go. Um, and of course, I, I have to make uh, uh, a little mention, as, as Joost already also nicely did for me, uh, we, it's not gone yet, Corona, so we have to be careful. Um, many of our students, you don't get sick from uh, uh, coronavirus, but maybe uh, your, your, your teacher does. So I want to stress, if you have physical complaints, if you feel ill, stay at home go into self-isolation and uh, uh, really uh, uh, get yourself tested. Um, um, we're as open as we can be. We cram as many people as we can into the building right now. And what we really need is for everybody to focus. Uh, um, I've said this at the beginning of the, uh, uh, of the corona crisis. Uh, we have to keep our priorities stra straight. The most important thing for all of us, for our students, for our lecturers, for our employees, for everybody, your health comes first. And I think second com comes the health of those around you. Uh, that's your family your friends, maybe your parents, but also your co-workers. Third comes your job, your study program, whatever it is. That's the order of priorities that we, that we still have. So if you feel sick, stay home for yourself, for your colleagues, and then focus on studying. Don't worry too much that, that if you go into self-isolation that, that you won't meet the course requirements. We can sort a lot of things out. Everybody will understand that, that we need to keep our priorities straight. So that's going to be fine if we stick to that. I think we can keep it in check and we can get as many of uh, the employees and the students back into the building as we can, as, as we're doing now. We'll keep trying to be as open as we can. Um, so that's um, what, I, what I really want to stress. Um, and... Uh, um, I also want to say, you know, we've spent a lot of time uh, with dealing with the crisis, 
But let's go back to what we're here for, right? Nobody came to work with us because they wanted to uh, uh, fill pres uh, 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 lists of people that will be present. Nobody came to work at Leiden because they want to do instruction by video. Uh, uh, we are curious people that work at a uh, research university because we love science and we love training people for science. And so we're back in the lab. Uh, um, People are getting their degrees, bachelors, masters, and PhD, um, and we still publish really great papers. Um, these are hard times, and, and uh, science is under the microscope. Huh? Uh, uh, we have an important role in society to do good science, to, uh, uh, have to make new discoveries, but also to help society and to teach people uh, what uh, the impact of all the bi biology around us is. So let's focus on that. Let's go back to work, back to science, back to studying, and enjoy that. Thanks for watching. I wish everybody a great year, and I hope to see you face to face somewhere in the next year in our great faculty of science. Thanks. <laughs>